Sviki, this is Everyday Sentences in Lithuanian series, and today is our 12th lesson. Negalavami. 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 Illnesses. These negalavami uh, are illnesses. They are not uh, diseases. Diseases would be legos. And illnesses are negalavami. Some minor problems. Well, probably not minor, but you know some kind of illnesses. So today we'll learn some sentences about illnesses, about health, about uh, diseases and other problems related with health. The, uh, this is the contents of our series and as always we have some sentences uh, that are associated, that are related to the topic and of course uh, you can watch all those uh, videos and uh, after finishing our lesson uh, our this last lesson illnesses uh, you will uh, have the chance to uh, see the review video with all those 300 sentences that appeared in all our 12 lessons in our 12 lessons so uh, we will review all those sentences in our next lesson, in our next session. And now let's start our twelfth lesson. Kuo skundžiatės? Kuo skundžiatės? What are you complaining about? Kuo skundžiatės? Kuo is the instrumental case. Skūstis kuo? If you're saying I'm complaining about something, you should say, for example, "spodimo." I'm complaining about the blood pressure. "Spodimo," "spodimas," "spodimo." You should use the instrumental case with this verb. So, "kuoskunjetis," what are you complaining about? "Kuoskunjetis." "Kokos problemos?" "Kokos problemos?" Kokos problemos? Literally, what are the problems or what is the problem? Kokos problemos? Ar turite nusiskundimu? Ar turite nusiskundimu? Do you have some complaints or do you have any complaints? Ar turite nusiskundimu? Nusiskundimu. Ar turite nusiskundimu? Ar turite nusiskundimu? Ar turite nusiskundimu? Do you have complaints? Nusiskundimas, one complaint. Nusiskundimai, complaints. So, basically this word is almost uh, used only within this context, within the health context. Or, well, it could be also used in the, about, talking about services, like uh, complaints about your services or customer service. You could use this word nusiskundimai. Yra nusiskundimu, there are some complaints. Yra nusiskundimu. Or I have some complaints. Aš turi nusiskundimu. Aš turi nusiskundimu. And do you have any complaints? Ar turite nusiskundimu? So this is used in the health context or in customer service. Uh, in customer service uh, context. Have you already been? Ar jūs jau buvote to the doctor? Pas gydytoje? Ar jūs jau buvote pas gydytoje? Ar jūs jau buvote pas gydytoje? Ar jūs jau buvote pas gydytoje? Have you already? Yo means already. Buvote, you were at the doctor's or to the doctor. Pas gydytoje. Pas. Pas means at someone's home or at the doctor's or uh, or pas uh, could also be used with some other kind of uh, job. Pas uh, advokata at the uh, lawyer or pas, uh, well, some, it could also be used with some other jobs like pas advokata or pas gydyta to the doctor or at the doctor. You know, I don't know what's the more correct translation. Are you so bought pas gydyta? Have you already been to the doctor? Good doctor is gidytas, but sometimes doctoras is used. 
So the sentence would sound like Are you still bought a post doctor? Are you still bought a post doctor? Are you still bought a post doctor? Doctors, well, it's not official, but many people still use doctors. Doctors means doctor, and gidtos means someone who heals, because gidt means to heal, and gidtos someone who heals, someone who is healing. So both those two options are possible to hear, but uh, you know, doctors is more used within the context of like. Uh, doctor you know, as a science degree doctors and uh, the official version should be Gitus, a doctor uh, as a medical doctor in a hospital but uh, people could also say doctors so don't get confused mom blogger mom blogger mom blogger I feel sick about to vomit Svaikta galva Svaikta galva Svaikta galva I feel dizzy My head is somehow dizzy Galva means head So svaikta my head My head is going to feel is, is feeling dizzy or something like that My head feels dizzy Svaikta galva Svaikta galva Or if you want to say my head spinning There's a there's this phrase in Lithuanian Man suka se galva Suka se galva Suktis means to spin around or to to go around and sukasi is spinning, you know, it's a reflexive verb. Sukasi galva. Man sukasi galva. Man sukasi galva. You can say my head spinning. This means my head spinning. Man sukasi galva. Or you can say man sukasi galva. I f my, head feel, my head feels dizzy. Man shalta. Man shalta. Man shalta. I'm cold. No, for me it is cold. Shalta is a neuter adjective. As well as bloga. Blogas bloga means a, a bad a, as an adjective. And bloga is a neuter adjective. It is bad or it is cold. Bloga, shalta. Shalta shalta. Uh, masculine, feminine. Shalta shalta. And shalta is a neuter adjective. So, blogger and shalta are neuter adjectives. It is bad, for me it is bad, or for me it is cold, literally. So, when you are saying, I'm cold, you can say, man shalta, man shalta, man shalta. Or when, uh, when it's uh, hot for you, when you're feeling hot, you say, man karsta, man karsta, you know, man karsta. In, as the opposite sentence of this, the opposite meaning. Mansko da galva, mansko da galva. I've got a headache. Uh, so for all Lithuanian uh, sentences, like ache, headache, stomach, stomach ache, and so on, you use this verb skoda. Skoda is a non-personal verb. It's only used in the third person. Skoda. He, she, they, skoda. But you know, he, she, they. It's, it's, I only say that because the, the third person. You cannot, you cannot use this word with uh, ash to use mass. Uh, I heard, you heard. Uh, this verb is not used this way. Man skoda. For me, it hurts head. For me, it hurts head. So this is accusative case. So man skoda, and you say what? hurts you say galva nogara back and so on you can just put any body part here in accusative so months coda i've got a some kind of ache months coda for me it hurts literally for me it hurts okay let's go on months loga months loga i've got a runny ro uh, nose months loga sloga is a state when you've got a runny nose and when you can hardly breathe or something like this, you know. So months loga, or you can say if you ha if you've got a runny nose, you know, uh, it's not necessarily a runny nose. Sloga sloga is like a disease. It's the kind of illness that you have when you have a runny nose. 
but you can have a, a nose uh, when you know you cannot breathe you know there's nothing running out of the nose but you cannot breathe so you can also use manslaga for me it is a runny nose or rhinitis or something like this in latin i'm not sure what's the name of this state of this illness so we say for me it is sloga man sloga uh, even when if when nothing's running out of your nose but you can hardly breathe you know there's something in your nose so but when you've got a runny nose you can also say beganosis or man beganosis for me uh, the nose is running man beganosis beganosis literally bega means is running and nosis means nose so the nose is running bega nosis or man bega nosis i've got a running nose when snots i'm sorry are running out of your nose dok kostyo dok kostyo dok kostyo i cough a lot so dok a lot i cough kostyo kostyo Kosite, koste, koste yo. Dok kosto. Skauda gerkla, or you can say man, man skauda gerkla. Just like man skauda galva, you can say skauda gerkla. Skauda gerkla. I've got sore throat. Skauda gerkla. Gerkla means throat. So skauda gerkla, gerkla. It's accusative. Skauda gerkla. I've got a sore throat. Skauda gerkla. The kostyo I cough a lot. A sharoya akis. A sharoya akis. I've got watery eyes. Well, you know, in English this is an adjective, watery eyes, but in Lithuanian this is an a verb. A sharote, a sharoya, a sharoyo. So to be watery, literally. This verb means to be watery for eyes. So my eyes are watering, something like this. So you say a sharoyak is when you've got tears in your eyes, when your eyes are irritated, so you say a sharoyak is. Or you can say man, man a sharoyak is. Man a sharoyak is. For me, uh, the eyes are watering, something like this. Pershalo, pershalo. I've caught a, uh, a cold. Pershalo. So shalte, you know, shalte means to be cold. And socialty means to to become cold, you know. I was I was cold, you know. When you freeze, something like socialty means also to freeze. So I froze socialo. But when you're saying I've got a cold, you know, you've got flu or you've got a cold, you've got a runny nose, you can say ashparshalo, parshalo, ashparshalo. This is a past tense of a verb with the prefix per. Per means through. So I, I was I froze through or something like this. This is the literal translation. So when you want to say I've got a call, you say per shalo, ash per shalo, ash per shalo. Uh, Also, a cold as an illness is called per shalimas, per shalimas, a noun formed from this verb or vice versa. I'm not sure which one was first, whether the noun or the verb. So parshalimus is a cold as an illness and to catch a cold means to parshalte. Parshalte, parshala, parshalo. Parshalo, ash parshalo. To parshalo. And so on. When you've got flu, you can say mangripas. Mangripas, literally. For me, it is flu. It sounds this way. For me, it is flu. Man grippus. Well, perhaps it's related with the verb ujete. Ujete means to come. For example, aš užėjo ibara. I went to the bar. Or I just went and thought what a nice idea to go to the bar. So aš užėjo ibara. I visited or came to a bar. So ujete could also mean well, um, like, man užėjo gripas, man užėjo gripas, no, I've got a flu, man užėjo gripas, I got, no, užėti means to get, uh, man užėjo sloga, man užėjo sloga, I've got uh, a runny nose, so man užėjo gripas, uh, for me, 
grip uh, flu cane something like this so probably this or this collocation man grippus comes from the phrase man ugeo grippus i've got a flu man ugeo made from the word to come so man grippus i've got a flu or aš sergu gripu i have a flu sergu means i have an illness aš sergu gripu when you're using the word sergu you use the instrumental case next man atrodo it seems i have temperature turiu temperatūros man atrodo turiu temperatūros man atrodo turiu temperatūros man atrodo turiu temperatūros it seems i have some temperature no you see i have some temperature no not all the temperature in the world or something like this so you use genitive case if you want to say some sugar some milk some money uh, some temperature you always use genitive case with such some uh, with nouns and some some temperature temperaturas genitive temperatura temperaturos turu i have some temperature temperaturos man atrodo turu temperaturos man atrodo turu temperaturos i can't fall asleep negalu užmekti negalu užmekti negalu užmekti you see lithuanian is such a language uh, where you know it it expresses the thought in two words when english has one two three four five words so <laughs> you know I can't negalo fall asleep užmekti. Miegoti means to sleep and užmekti, užmiega, užmigo means to fall asleep. Finished action with the prefix. And uh, the root also changes from the word miegoti to mikti. Užmekti. So I can't fall asleep. Negalo užmekti. And there is also one good phrase for expressing the same thought. Man namiga. Man namiga. I've got an insomnia. Namiga means insomnia. Uh, the negative prefix plus the root from this word užmikte, to fall asleep. So namiga means insomnia. Man namiga. The same you can say, the same way as you say man grippus, I've got a flu. Uh, you can say man namiga, I've got insomnia. So, man namiga. Mane pikina. Mane pikina. I feel sick. You know, when you're about to vomit. Mane pikina. Mane pikina. Man palaido vidurus. Man palaido vidurus. I've got diarrhea. Man palaido vidurus. Or, aš viduriuoju. Aš viduriuoju. So, you see, uh, palasti means to let go, and vidurei means the insides, so the insides of a person. So, my insides have let go, something like this. So, I've got the run, I've, I've got uh, the runs or diarrhea. This means the same, mam do vidrus. Or, you can say, the, my insides have let go, something like this, literal translation, or... Uh, I've got the runs. Aš viduriuoju. Aš viduriuoju. This is a verb. Viduriuoti viduriuoju viduravo. Viduravo. So, I've got a diarrhea. And uh, let's come back to this sentence here. Mane pikina. You're going to wonder, what's this word? Mane, this is the accusative. This is the accusative of aš. You know, pikinti means to to make sick or to make nauseated yeah, so to make sick uh, and mane uh, i am made sick literally i am made sick so pikin te ka pikina mane you have to use the accusative case so mane this is the accusative case of i me uh, it it's making not uh, sick pikina pikin te pikina pikina uh, to make sick, to, to make feel sick or to make feel nauseated and so on. Uh, from the w it's made from the word pictus, 
angry or to pikte. Pikte means to be angry or to get angry. Okay, let's come back to the third sentence. Negalu valgite. Negalu valgite. Negalu valgite. I can't eat. Negalu valgite. Negalu valgite. Man sunku kvepote. It's hard to breathe. Or literally, for me, it is hard to breathe. Because again, this is a neuter adjective. Just like in a few slides ago, there were sentences with neuter adjectives. It is hard to breathe. Sunku kvepote. Man sunku kvepote. Man sunku kvepote. Man sunku kvepote. It's hard to breathe for me. Okay, now some more expressions. Susimushu. Susimushu. Susimushu means to bump or to stub something. Like when you're walking in a room, in your room, and you somehow bump your he uh, your leg into a chair or your toe into a chair or your hand into some kind of object you bump or stub uh, when you bump when you bump or stub you can say arsusimushu or it means to hurt so i hurt my hand leg uh, stomach and back so susimushu means to hurt or to bump or to stub when there's you know a physical uh, action, a physical um, bump, you know <laughs> how to say this. Yeah, no, when you just bump into something. So, susimushu ranka, susimushu ranka. I bumped my hand, or I stopped, or I hurt. Susimushu koya, susimushu koya. I hurt my leg. Susimushu pilwa. Susimushu pilva. I hurt my stomach. Susimushu nogara. Susimushu nogara. I hurt my back. Susitrenkyo. Susitrenkyo means to hurt. Uh, it also, it's almost uh, a synonym of susimushte. <coughs> These are almost synonyms. Susitrenkyo means something like bump or to stub or to hurt when there's uh, an interaction when two objects collide like your head and a ball you can say aš susitrinkiu or aš susimušiu so susitrinkiu kojo spiršta susitrinkiu kojo spiršta I hurt my toe remember that there's no word for toe in Lithuanian only kojo spirštas literally a finger of a leg so, susitrinkiu kojo spiršta. Susitrinkiu kojo spiršta. I hurt my toe. Susitrinkiu alkūne. Susitrinkiu alkūne. I hurt my ankle. You can also use these words in this sentence. Susitrinkiu ranka, susitrinkiu kojo, susitrinkiu pilva, susitrinkiu nugara. You can use you can use all those forms uh, wor words because you can hurt all of those body parts. Okay, let's go on. Let's see how to say I've broken my hand. Man lūžo ranka. Man lūžo ranka. Lūžte means to break. So it's a non-personal verb. You cannot say aš lūžau, I broke. Because, you know, you cannot break apart. You can only say that something broke for you, man, for me, man, you know, for me, my hand broke, or has broken. Lūžoranka, the hand broke, or has broken. So, man lūžoranka, for me, the hand has broken. Man lūžoranka, this is the literal translation, you know, it's always good to know the literal translation. I'm. You know, I'm not sure about you, but when I see a phrase in, in a foreign language, you know, it's good to see what what each word means and what's the what it sounds like. You know, what's the feeling of the language? You know, you have to to feel and to sense the the phrase and the words. You have to feel them. You have to understand them. So that's why 
I always try to 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 say the the literal translations and well I may not translate everything or I may forget to translate something literally or or just even even some other kind of sentences I can forget to translate but uh, but you know you can ask questions in the comments section so let's continue Manlu Joranka, I've broken my hand, or for me, my hand has broken, or broke. Manlu Jokoya, Manlu Jokoya, I've broken my leg. Manlu Jopirstas, Manlu Jopirstas, I've broken my toe, or my finger, or my toe. Manlu Jokoya Spirstas, I've broken my toe, or Manlu Jopirstas, I've broken my finger. Manlu Jorishas, Manlu Jorishas, I've broken my wrist. Riesus. Next, I can't bend. Negalu sulengte. Lengte means to bend, and sulengte means to bend. A finished action. Finished action with a prefix. Perfective. Negalu sulengte. Negalu sulengte. I can't bend. Rankos. Negalu sulengte rankos. I can't bend my hand. Negalu sulengte rankos. Negalu sulengte koyos. Negalu sulengti koyos. I can't bend my leg. Negalu sulengti pirshto. Negalu sulengti pirshto. I can't bend my fingers. Negalu sulengti koyos pirshto. Or koyu pirshto. Toes. Negalu sulengti kaklo. Negalu sulengti kaklo. I can't bend my neck. Well, probably sulengti doesn't suit the sentence. The sentence with kaklos very much because. Uh, you cannot bend your neck, you know, totally. You can only bend it a little, so you could better use palenkte kaklo. Palenkte kaklo. Negalu palenkte kaklo. Palenkte means to bend a little. And bend means to bend completely, like to, to bend your, you know, legs and arms and fingers when you, when there's a full... Uh, full motion, you know, bending something, but you know, the neck is not very flexible uh, body part, so you should use palenkte to bend a little, or you know, to palenkte means to bend down, so I cannot bend down my neck. Negolo palenkte kaklo, negolo palenkte kaklo. Oh, but let's uh, let's hope you will not uh, need to use these kind of sentences in Lithuanian. Man skauda pilva. Man skauda pilva. So as I've said, man skauda, you put the body part in accusative and you've got the uh, sentence my something hurts. Man skauda, for me it hurts some object, some body part. Man skauda pilva. My stomach hurts. Man skauda pilva. Man skauda pilva. Next. Man skauda shona. Man skauda shona. My side hurts. Well, what's shonas? Shonas means a side of an object, for example, or the side of your stomach. Uh, your, for example, ribs, or the side of your stomach. Uh, shonas is the side of your body, uh, of your, for example, stomach. So. Uh, when you've got you no know, pain on in the side of your body, like uh, kidney pain or some kind of other pain that's in, like in the side of your uh, body, in the main part, you know, not in legs, not in arms, but in the main part, where the belly is, where the lungs, the kidneys, you can say manskuda shon, you know, you're not sure whether it's kidneys or something else that hurts. But you can say manskuda shona. My side hurts. So I hope you understood this. Manskuda krutina. Manskuda krutina. Manskuda krutina. My chest hurts. My back hurts. Manskuda nogara. Manskuda nogara. Manskuda nogara. My back hurts. Nogara. Nogara. Accusative. All those nouns are in accusative. Man skauda danti, danti, I'm sorry, danti. <coughs> Man skauda danti. 
months go da denti, my tooth hurts. Or you can say, if you want to use the plural, teeth, you say dentis, dentis, because dentis, uh, dentis is also the singular nominative. Dentis, the uh, plural nominative, dentis, and the accusative nominative is dentis, dentis. So man's called dentis, my teeth hurts, man's called the dentis, or my tooth hurts, man's called the denti. One teeth, uh, one tooth, I'm sorry. Manishtina. If something has swollen for you, man, you can say man ishtina. Tinti means to swell and ishtina have swollen, finished action. With prefix ish. Manishtina. Manishtina ranka. Manishtina ranka. My hand has swollen. Manishtina ranka. Manishtina kalis. Manishtina kalis. My knee has swollen. Man ishti no kalis. Man ishti no pirshti. Man ishti no pirshti. My fingers or koju pirshti. Toes have swollen. Man ishti no pirshti. I'm allergic to ash allergishkas. And there you say this, that thing. But you use the dative case. When you're saying you are allergic to something or literally for something, you use the dative case because dative case means is like for something, for or to. This is an indirect object. So you use the dative case. So in this sentence, you use accusative case, for me it hurts something. Uh, for this sentence, you use uh, nominative case because something has won. So the object, uh, fingers, knees, hands are objects, so the objects are in nominative, of course, like all objects. And uh, if you're allergic to something, you use dative case, because dative means for or to something. Aš allergiškas laktozi. Aš allergiškas laktozi. I'm allergic to lactose. Aš allergiškas laktozi. Aš allergiškas riešutams. Aš allergiškas riešutams. Aš allergiškas riešutams. I'm allergic to nuts. I'm not sure this phrase in English sounds well. I don't know. If you if you see an incorrect translation, please, uh, please uh, correct me in the comments of this video. So, you know, if you're willing to help me with the translations, your comments are welcome. Next, uh, man scooby. I need immediately. Scooby means immediately. To take. Man scooby reike. I need immediately. Reike means I need. Man reike. For me it is needed immediately. Scooby to drink, uh, literally to drink the medicine. Išgerti vaistu. To drink some medicine. So you use genitive. Like some milk, some money, some sugar. You always use genitive case. So. Man skubi reike išgerti vaistu. Man skubi reike, I'm sorry, man skubi reike išgerti vaistu. Man skubi reike išgerti vaistu. I need to take medicine immediately. Man skubi for me, man reike. For me it is needed, skubi, immediately, to drink, literally, išgerti some medicine, vaistu. Vaistai, vaistai means medicine. And ways to plural genitive, just like all plural genitives end in unosin. Remember this. Just like I always say to you, all plural genitives end in u or u. The same letter. Uh, so we stay ways to. And to take medicine, Lithuanian uses išgerti or gerti vaistus. You know, gerti vaistus to drink, to take medicine, gerti vaistus, you use. Gerti plus accusative, gerti vaistus. And if you're using the finished action, išgerti, išgerti, to take medicine, išgerti vaistu, išgerti plus genitive, išgerti vaistu. So when you're using the finished action, the perfective verb, you have to use genitive, and if you're using it without the ish, like gara vaistus, he's taking medicine, you know, this month. 
gera vaistus drinking literally medicine taking medicine uh, accusative and this is genitive because this is a perfective uh, verb perfective so you have to have those nuances in your mind if you're talking about your medicine okay some last sentences iškvieskite greitaja iškvieskite greitaja call the ambulance iškvieskite greitaja kviesti means to know white and iškvieste to call the ambulance no iškvieste policija to call police iškvieste gaisirinė well gaisirinė <laughs> fire emergency is not used very often with this word iškvieste but you know with with the police and with ambulance iškvieste is used so iškvieskite this is the imperative iškvieskite call the ambulance greitaja greitaja this is a pronominal adjective uh, you can see you can see some more information about this word uh, in the Lithuanian vocabulary video called Galbete <coughs> ir pagalba to help and help or something like this in vocabulary series on my channel iškvieskite greitaja call the ambulance iškvieskite greitaja iškvieskite greitaja call the ambulance what if there is a need to do artificial respiration artificial respiration is dirbtinis kvepavimus dirbtinis means artificial and kvepavimus means respiration or breathing so kvepoti means to breathe and kvepavimus breathing or respiration so dirbtinis artificial breathing dirbtini kvepavima this is the accusative reikia daryti it is needed to do remember that reikia is a non-personal verb it does not have ashiriku to reikia there's no such forms no it's only used in the third person it is needed reikia reikia it's only used in the third person reikia it is needed literally but we can translate it as we need so we need to do daryti dirbtini kvepama artificial respiration reikia daryti dirbtini kvepama reikia daryti dirbtini kvepama Reikia daryti dirbtini kvepama. Take me, nuveškite mane to the hospital, į ligoninę, or to a hospital. Nuveškite mane į ligoninę, nuveškite mane į ligoninę, nuveškite mane į ligoninę. Take me to the hospital, to a hospital. Nuvešti, vešti means to take someone by car or by bus or by train to, you know, to, to transport someone or something. And nuvešti, perfective, finished action, nuveškite, this is uh, an imperative, just like this, iškvieskite, nuveškite, those are two imperatives. The you plural or second person plural imperatives, nuveškite, iškvieskite, uh, nuveškite mane į ligoninę, nuveškite mane į ligoninę, nuveškite mane į ligoninę. Liga means disease and ligonis, a sick person, so ligonine, a hospital. And one more thing about the imperatives, the imperative endings, just like present tense and past tense endings for the second person plural, can be shortened. Iškvieskit greitaja, or nuveškit mane ligonine. The e can be omitted. Iškvieskit greitaja, nuveškit mane ligonine. The e is not always said, just like in the present tense and in the past tense. Next, ar turite vaistų nuo peršalimo? Do you have some medicine, or, you know, any medicine, for flu? I don't know how to translate this more accurately, but, you know, peršalimas is a cold, just like I've said before in this video, in the first slide. Peršalimas is a cold. So, do you have some medicine for a cold? You know, to cure cold. Ar turite vaistų nuo peršalimo? Ar turite vaistų nuo peršalimo? Uh, nuo, you see, this is, literally means from. From. 
uh, when you're talking about medicine uh, for uh, flu or for a cold or for an allergy you use this preposition no which means from so do you have medicine from a cold or from a flu or from allergy this is the literal translation but uh, you know Noah always uses genitive so these you see that these are all genitives Parshalimus, parshalimo, gripas gripo, allergia, feminine, allergios. These are all genitives. So be cautious about this. Arturite vaistu nuo parshalimo. Arturite vaistu nuo gripo. Arturite vaistu nuo gripo. Do you have some medicine for flu? Arturite vaistu nuo allergios. Arturite vaistu nuo allergios. Do you have some medicine for for, uh, for allergy. Arturite vaistu no plus a noun in genitive. Okay. Sergu diabeto. Sergu diabeto. Or diabeto. Sometimes people can stress diabeto. But you know, the correct version is sergu diabeto. Sergu diabeto. I have diabetes. Sergu asthma. Sergu asthma. Sergo asthma. I have asthma. You you know, you see the word sirkte serga sirgo. To be sick or to have an illness. So when you, uh, you can also use this word with grippas. Like sergo gripo. I have a flu. Sergo peršalimo. Peršalimas peršalimo. You must use instrumental case. Sergu peršalimo, sergu gripo, sergu diabetu, sergu asma. You have to use the instrumental case, diabetas, diabetu. As changes to O because those sergu is always used with the instrumental case. Sergu kua. I'm, you know, I'm having a disease, you know, with, like, um, I'm having a bad health with diabetes. Or, no, I just cannot say the literal meaning, you know. When you're saying it's it's just a state. It's a state of a person. Sergo means, you know, I have an illness. So you must remember that it's always instrumental with sergo. Sirkte serga sergo. Sergo, diabeto, asthma, peršalimo, gripo. So that was it for our our 12th lesson. And in our next 13th lesson, we'll see all those 300 sentences that have been in all our everyday sentences in the Lithuanian series.